Bloom's taxonomy is a common framework used to classify learning objectives. According to Bloom's original text, there are three taxonomic domains, the cognitive domain, the affective domain, and the psychomotor domain. In this video, we will discuss the cognitive domain. This covers learning objectives which deal with the recall or recognition of knowledge and the development of intellectual abilities and skills. It is the domain most widely referred to and most relevant in the context of higher education. Many of you have probably seen Bloom's taxonomy of the cognitive domain in the form of a pyramid, like this. Before we really dive in here, it's important to know that this pyramid does not appear anywhere in either the original or the revised taxonomies, so we're going to go ahead and discard it. It's a little misleading and quite incomplete. For example, one major misconception about Bloom's taxonomy is that it is a lockstep hierarchy wherein each level is a requirement for the next. This isn't exactly the case. There is mention that the taxonomy is a hierarchy in the original 1956 text. However, after further investigation, this was adjusted in the more recent 2001 version. As stated in the revision, the empirical evidence suggests that the middle three levels, understand, apply, and analyze, may create a cumulative hierarchy, but not always. The order that you see here from low to high is in terms of general complexity, not steps to each other. That is, the levels on the lower end tend to require less interactions and considerations, and the levels on the higher end tend to have more working parts and requirements. Now, this doesn't mean that the lower levels are easier and the higher levels are more difficult. A simple or complex task can fall anywhere on the spectrum of difficulty. It just depends on the nature of the task and the ability of the learner. For example, lifting a heavy weight is pretty simple, yet can be quite difficult. On the other hand, Baking a batch of cookies is somewhat complex, but relatively easy to do. The levels do have varying degrees of overlap, though it's really a case-by-case -case thing. For example, you aren't required to name and explain all the parts of a bicycle before you learn how to ride one, and you don't need to know how to ride a bike to evaluate the quality of one. However, if you are going to fix a bicycle, you might need to know what the parts do and why before taking the steps to fix it. It all depends on the task or behavior indicated in the objective. In the revised version of the taxonomy, which is what we will refer to moving forward, the cognitive domain consists of two dimensions, the cognitive processing dimension and the knowledge dimension. Therefore, this taxonomy is represented as a grid, not a pyramid. Let's first break down the cognitive processing dimension. This consists of six levels, but each of these levels have subdivisions that help you identify more specific, measurable, and observable behaviors within that level of complexity. Please refer to the Cognitive Processing Dimension handout for more in-depth explanations and examples of these subdivisions. Knowing them will really help you identify the processing level of your objectives. For now, we will cover the general description of each level. The first level is Remember. This is generally described as retrieving relevant knowledge from long-term memory. The next level of complexity is Understand. This involves constructing meaning from instructional messages including oral, written, and graphic communication. The third level, apply, involves carrying out or using a procedure in a given situation. The fourth level, analyze, includes breaking material into constituent parts and determining how the parts relate to one another and to an overall structure or purpose. The fifth level, evaluate, involves making judgments based on criteria and standards. And finally, the sixth level of complexity in the cognitive processing dimension is create. This involves putting elements together to form a coherent or functional whole, or reorganizing elements into a new pattern or structure. The knowledge dimension is separated into four distinct types with accompanying subtypes. These undergird the elements of the cognitive processing dimension. That is, the knowledge dimension indicates the nature of what students will learn, whereas the cognitive processing dimension indicates how students will think about that learning. Please refer to the knowledge dimension handout for a more detailed description of each type and subtype. The first type is factual knowledge. This is described as the basic elements students must know to be acquainted with a discipline or solve problems within it. The second type is conceptual knowledge, generally described as interrelationships among the basic elements within a larger structure that enable them to function together. 
The third type is procedural knowledge, and this involves how to do something, methods of inquiry, and criteria for using skills, algorithms, techniques, and methods. And the final type is metacognitive knowledge. This involves knowledge of thinking in general, as well as awareness and knowledge of one's own thinking. It is often mistakenly assumed that the taxonomy is a tool for writing learning objectives. However, in fact, it is a tool to analyze objectives that have already been written. We do this to determine which objectives are emphasized and or missing. This analysis leads to either a general satisfaction with the state of affairs or a need to modify the course to achieve a more effective instructional design. Here are the basic steps to apply Bloom's taxonomy. Take an existing objective and determine its level of cognitive processing. You can do this by focusing on the verb of the objective. For example, in the objective, explain how bike gears work, the verb explain is a subset of the processing level understand. Then, determine which knowledge type the objective falls under. You can do this by focusing on the noun or thing to be learned. In this case, how bike gears work. This falls under the conceptual knowledge type subset, knowledge of principles and generalizations. Now, place the objective at that intersection on the grid. We have now classified this as an objective for explaining conceptual knowledge. Do the same for your remaining objectives. Once they are all placed on the grid, the taxonomy gives us a bird's eye view of two things. One, we get to see what type of learning we are emphasizing in the course. For example, if the course is about bicycle repair, the majority of the objectives would be expected to fall under the processing levels understand and apply, and the knowledge types of conceptual knowledge and procedural knowledge. This allows us to assess whether or not the objectives align with the intended instruction. If your objective isn't where you want it to be, this will help you find a more accurate verb or noun to inform the design of your activities. The second thing the taxonomy reveals is missed instructional opportunities. That is, all of those blank cells left on the grid. Now, the aim isn't to fill all the cells. That would defeat the purpose. The aim is to look at the blank cells and ask, should there be learning at this intersection of processing and knowledge? This helps us identify any gaps and create a stronger course. Also, if you found all your objectives are overtly clustered in one area, this can be an indicator that your class may be imbalanced or your objectives aren't written for what you intend. Always ask yourself of your objectives, do the words I have chosen describe what I intend? This helps inform us how to design or redesign more effective assessments. This takes some effort and thinking, but in the long run, if you start with well thought out objectives before you create assessments and activities, your course will have much less bloat show more value, and make more sense to your students.